Now let's go to the installation and connection of the non-shielded RG45 connector and the non-shielded network cable. Prepare the following items. A non-shielded RG45 connector, a non-shielded network cable, a pair of crane pliers, a pair of diagonal pliers, and a steel ruler for the non-shielded network cable. A tester for network cable connectivity. The following is the installation and connection procedure. Step 1. Peel away the outer jacket. Peel outer jacket of 60 mm off the non-shielded network cable with the private crimp pliers or diagonal pliers. Cut off the nylon line from the stem. Do not scratch the insulation of the twisted pair cable wire. Step 2. Split the pairs of twisted cables and lay out the cables. Split the four pairs of twisted wires of different colors. Place them in an order according to the wire color of the related network cable. Level off the ends of the wires by cutting. Huawei network cable fought into two types, straight through cable and crossover cable. The wires of the straight through cable at the two ends are placed in the same order of colors, see the following table. The wires of the crossover cable at the two ends are placed in the different order of colors, see the following table. The following figure shows the pin out of RG45 connector. Step 3. Install RG45 connector and crimp it. Insert the outer wires into the non-shielded RG45 connector. Note the direction of the RG45 connector. Make sure the wire colors correspond to the pin outs of RG45 connector correctly. Take a look from the side of the connector and make sure that the wire is connected at the bottom of RG45 connector. The outer jacket of the network cable is at the place where the plastic end of the connector is crimped. Crimp RJ45 connector with the crimp pliers for non-shielded network cable. The non-shielded RJ45 connector and non-shielded network cable are installed and connected. Step 4. Check the appearance. Hold the crimped connector and observe the end surface. See the height of the metal contacts. In principle, the height range is 6.02 mm plus or minus 0.13 mm. If there is no professional tester, compare the crimped connector and the well crimped connector meeting the requirements. If the connector does not meet all the requirements, re-crimp it until it is well crimped. Hold the connector to a tilting degree of 45 degrees and observe the top of the metal contact. Hold the connector and check if there are any sundries, blots or IMO on the contact end surface and the front. If there are any, clear them off. Otherwise, you need to change another connector. Otherwise, the connector is unqualified. Hold the connector and check if the end surface, front or plastic scepter are tilted or damaged. Put them straight. Otherwise, you need to change another connector. Otherwise, the connector is unqualified. Hold the connector and check if you can see the wire cross-section from the end surface of the connector. Make sure that the end of the cable well is close to the end surface of the connector trough and the metal contact crimp knife edge goes beyond the well end. The crimp knife edge is securely crimped with the well. Otherwise, you need to change another connector. Otherwise, the connector is unqualified. Step 5. Test the connection and disconnection of the network cable. Insert the connectors at both ends of the network cable into RJ45 female part of the tester. Turn on the tester switch. If the indicators 1 to 8 light up in sequence, 
it indicates that the test on the continuity and connection succeed. Slightly shake the network cable and connect it with the connector, and then repeat step two. Check if the metal contacts of the network cable connector contact with the well and contact points of the female pod well. Test procedures for the crossover cable are the same as those for the straight trough cable. What differs is the lighting up sequence of indicators at the two ends, refer to the cable connection during the test. The sequence in which the indicators of the crossover cable light up is as follows. In normal cases, indicators light up from indicator 1 to indicator 8 in sequence at the main end and light up in the sequence of 3, 6, 1, 4, 5, 2, 7, 8 at the other end. If indicators light up in a different order or some indicators do not light up, it indicates abnormality. If you do not have the tester, you can use the multimeter to have the test according to the cable connection. Use the multimeter to measure the power continuity of cable components.